the grand finale at Le Grand Circuit in French France. The historic road racing championship comes to a close today, and it's all to play for at the top. You know that track in northwestern France that a 24-hour race is held on? It's that, but not as you know it. Chicanes? What chicanes? 1954 sports cars racing at up to 200 miles an hour for two hours through the French countryside with absolutely no room for error. Yone Simicic and GP Laps both within a shot of taking the championship today, so it'll be a race of strategy and pace to achieve that top spot and be the king of vintage car racing here in R Factor 2. And to take you through this final race, brought to you by the fine folk at Simply Race in Milton Keynes, it's myself, Aidan Maud, and with me is probably the only man who would steal the car and keep it taxed and insured. It's Alex Goldschmidt. <laughs> Hello, Aidan. Hello, everyone. Uh, lovely introduction, uh, of course, of yours truly. Uh, Lastminute.com substitution, I believe. But yeah, uh, a fantastic way to finish off the Historic Road Racing Championship. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was really good to be back earlier on in the commentary box with you earlier on in the season. Yeah, that was for uh, for the uh, for dump Dundrod, drive round. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. a very long time ago, it feels like. But we're, we're here now at the finale. You can see the layout of the track. And yeah, we're calling it Le Grand Circuit because of the licensing issues that mm. tend to surround this kind of thing. So we've got to be super duper careful. But you know, and I know, it's that track. But you can see it's a direct run to the to the start finish line. There's no chicanes. There's no Porsche curves. I mean, we can call them Porsche curves or Porsche chicanes. That's fine. We just can't use just can't use the name. And uh, using the old style Le Mans start as well. It's not going to be quite like Grand Theft Auto running to the car and pressing enter to get in and then driving off. They're just going to be driving off in those little bays you can see to the side. But 17th of December 2022 round six. Le Grand two hours. It's been a great little season to, to watch. We started off with uh, the Longford two hours back in July, which feels such a very, very long time ago. And doing the Isle of Man TT and the Targa Florio last time out on the 19th of November. And it's it's great to see. I mean, we, we, we say this all the time, Alex, and we, we're starting mm -hmm. to sound like a broken record. It's yeah. so good to see something that isn't GT3s. It makes a nice change. And when, when I jumped on the broadcast with you for for Dundrod in uh, what was it you know close to two months ago October 22nd um I was waxing lyrical and I'm going to continue waxing lyrical because we've got the five liters the three liters the two liters back again uh, and this is what really really adds a nice dynamic to to sim racing where you you've got no aids you've got no assists it's just flat out pardon the pun balls to the wall that's what it's going to be all balls to the grassy verges here at Legrand. um but uh, it it just really is going to provide a, a hell of a spectacle. And, you know, Dundrod was a hell of a lot of fun. We saw Scotty Canton and just literally romp away like uh, like nobody's business. Uh, and he's one of, you know, many drivers that could be going for the title uh, this very this very afternoon. And, yeah, I'm looking forward to the battle. Yeah, if if, uh, if Jake and Yerne do stack it and somehow Ascari wins overall, he could win... The overall championship but we're really looking at jake and yerne there at the top 26 and 22 respectively i, th I, th I, th I think the maths has escaped me but i think that if yerne wins jake can finish uh third i think that's the max he can achieve and get away with it as it were uh yerne taking the isle of man and dodron rounds out uh, he wasn't here for isle of man because he was doing the uh the six hours of bahrain uh virtual mm -hmm. Mon, and uh just wasn't here for Dundrod. I don't know if he was doing something else at that time. Maybe it was a uh, virtual <coughs> championship or something like that. But anyway, mm. there is your five litre drivers championship standings. Five litres, they're going to be romping away with it. That is the Mulsan on your on your screen right now. No chicanes. I think it's about, I think it's something like three and a half miles. Just yeah. flat out. And then slamming on the brakes for Mulsan corner itself. It's I did it in an LMP1 car for a video a, a couple of months ago, and it was horrible. I don't know what it's going to be like in these cars. With, I mean, the Jag's going to have the advantage with the with the, with the disc brakes. Ferrari are going to have the drum brakes, but behind the wheel of that Ferrari is Yellow Symmetry. So it's it's all to play for, really. And here is the three liter drivers' championship standings. We're going to be seeing probably more five three two more than we did at the last couple of rounds. It's been a good balance of circuits this season, like Longford and Spa. They were five litre territory this is five litre territory the other two classes came back into it for the the time trials and, and that sort of thing but Scarry Canton and 
I mean, he he's won the two-liter drivers championship. But there is there is no doubt about it. He didn't even need to turn up. Uh, Silverwolf uh, could uh, just. I mean, I know if if Silverwolf actually got pole position, he would have been able to do it because we got the bonus point for that. But Ascari Cantons pretty much uh, pretty much, uh, won that one, so he, he's just going out for a nice Saturday drive. Some uh, decent drivers on there, like Isidoru, who won the class at the Isle of Man. Great showing from him. Uh, Jake Britton not turning up to the last three rounds, but still on a decent haul of points. So it's all been great to watch. The, the driving standards have been incredible. The um, the broadcasters looked great. Uh, the commentators have been rubbish, but it's uh, yep. it's just it's just <laughs> been a, a lot of a lot of fun to watch. And like we say, to have something that isn't GT threes and I, 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 you yourself, Alex, I, I, you've probably gone and got oh, another GT3 race and probably another GT3 race at Spa. But mm. now we're going to have historic racing cars at the Grand Circuit. The 1967 layout, it has to be said. Uh, so this is the the layout that the four GTs ran at that time. So it's a very historic, very prestigious venue. And it, it's going to bring back memories of. Well, if you're old enough, that is memories of uh, <laughs> of those cars running around. And uh, if I had a time machine, I probably would go back to to Le Mans around this time to to watch those cars. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of activity on the on the chat on Aiden's YouTube channel at the moment, which is also being broadcasted on there. But yeah, um, I had GT3s to the eyeballs at the Sim Racing Expo in Nuremberg a couple of weeks ago, and it's so refreshing to. To have this, are we going to see? Uh, are we going to see three wheels on those wagons like we did at Dundrod two months ago? Um, it just depends on how you approach certain parts of the circuit. You know, like the uh, like Mulsanne, Indianapolis, Arnage. Um, those are corners that are really going to test the drivers, especially as I said earlier, no assists. That's where you've got to really, really know your braking points, and we've already seen in the uh, in the pre-qualifying where Yerne was an absolute savage. I mean, the only drivers to dip between the three, below the three minute 52s, Mark Zeidler was quickest in the three liters with a four minute 3.8. And then Ascari Cantonen and the Mighty D were within half a second of each other in pre-qualifying. Um, so yeah, I, th I think it's going to be an interesting one. I'm really looking forward to seeing how Jake gets on. So he wasn't too far off of Yerne. And we, we did see that the, some of the five liters did come into dramas at Dundrod. I think uh, Jake came into dramas, and then we then we had um, I'm trying to remember who it was. It was ah, uh, oh, that was it. Real Deal God had so many beached on the uh... Uh, yeah, was beached and got assists, uh, and then someone else ended up with three wheels on their wagon for assisting Real Deal God. Uh, it was it was definitely the the meme part of the show, wasn't it, in Dundrod a couple of months back, Aiden. Yeah, we're just having, having a little bit of a laugh at his expense, but fair play to him. He carried on, uh, almost finished the race, but uh, just ended up uh, being in the wrong place at the wrong time. It was also quite helpful for someone to come along and just give him a bit of a, a bit of a bump off that as well. I don't think that's going to happen here today because if you wipe out on the Mulsan, yeah, it's a one-way trip into that guy's front room. Um, I know we were looking at this with twenty twenty-two eyes, but we look at them and it's like how why why did you even I, I guess this is 1954 10 years prior to to this race this was a battleground yeah and um i still remember actually uh going to the lamar international karting circuit which is based just off of the the modern day portion curbs um and to then see sort of like uh construction offices uh, tire tire service providers as well. Is um, Le Mans nowadays is is not so much an industrial town. It's more a city with the uh, the amount of infrastructure that's around it. But it's good to bring the old days back. It always is. I mean that 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 shot by itself. Yeah. I mean we're racing nineteen fifty four cars. Obviously nineteen fifty five. We had the very 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 unfortunate accident that almost ended motorsport, but they they, they carried on. They put the, the safety uh, procedures in place. And it wasn't until, I think it was 1960 or 1970 that they put an actual proper pit lane in here. So it, it's almost yep. like they learned their lesson, but didn't learn their lesson. So I one step forward, two steps back, really, in that kind of uh, situation. But yeah, safety, <clears throat> you know, back in the 1970s, um, championed by 
a certain three-time Formula One world champion, so Jackie Stewart, you know, has helped motorsport safety to progress to what it is now was the catalyst for it. But back in the 50s, it was everyone was there having fun, enjoying the atmosphere, enjoying the circuit, and they knew that there was the risk. But yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens over the next two hours, mate. Yeah, I was just, uh, in, the, in the process of uh, qualifying at the minute, and then there'll be a, a little bit of le warm-up, and then we'll get on with the, the afternoon's festivities. Uh, it's good to see everybody in the chat. So I'm just checking uh, my, my live stream chat. Uh, Brian Hewitt is currently laughing in French. Uh, the Racing Boy one says, gentlemen, start your motors. Uh, I think everybody's just making gags about the uh, yeah. like jazz jazz and cigarettes. I mean, if I smoked, I probably would. Uh, probably have, have lit, a, lit a couple of uh, jetons up or something like that. But yeah, uh, I don't think Aiden likes GT3s and Spa. I, I, I like GT3s. I like Spa. Occasionally, I like GT3 and Spa. I just don't like GT3s and Spa all the time. Uh, um, yes. What else? Uh, is this Claremont Ferrand? No, this is uh, Legrand. Um, uh, no, <laughs> yeah, no, this is, yeah, he only no, this, no, this no, is no, this is no, no, this is Patrick. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, I, I think it's it's going to be an interesting afternoon. I mean, like there is quite a lot of football off this afternoon so we're, we're providing an, an opportunity there we go frozen pitches so i'm watching hrrc live for the first time there we go hey get in. Uh, uh warsaw warsaw had their game cancelled so uh yeah i'm here not that i was going to be at Beskit anyway but we can see the cars lined up at the start at the start of the uh, the race here on the starting grid now remember back in the old days they would have stood on those circles on the right hand side and then run yep. to their cars the Honkers coming on, and we are away. Some, a couple of the cars appear to have stalled. Everybody is away, unless that 286 is just waiting. Oh my god! Oh, that was almost an accident. But everybody's away. Unit Simicic has just absolutely bolted into the lead. A one second gap nearly to Nico Hillebrand. Hopefully, he doesn't wrap it around a tree this time. Real Deal God is in third, but where is Jake? There he is. Oh. I can just see him on the inside heading towards the uh, Dunlop chicane. Mighty D leading the two-liter class and Rajasu leading the three-liter class. So everyone's a little bit shuffled up now as they come out of the Dunlop chicanes and head towards Tetris for the first time. And then as the yellow flag comes out in sector one, cars just jockey for position. Hillebrand up the inside of Simicic, real deal God, looking at Simicic as well. Now begins the slipstream battle. Yeah, this is where it's going to be uh, incredibly interesting as, well, the, is there a, an, an unplanned bump because it seems like some cars are going skyward uh but yeah hillbrand getting the jump on simicic early who's in the tow and you are that you are literally bump drafting here there is no who not yeah the traditional chicanes that we see nowadays so it's i hate to think what speeds they're going to be doing uh going into uh, into Mulzan because that's going to be at a right old rate of knots so your top five in the five liter class as they come up the more sun is hillbrand simicic well it's hillbrand real do god simicic Robbiard, Schneider, I'm assuming Jake's a little bit further down than that. The Mighty D leading the two leader class. So basically how this has happened oh. is there is a... Oh, there we go. Now they've flicked around as the engine power takes over on the Mulsan. And uh, yeah, coming up to the, the hump where uh, where Mark Webber famously flipped it in 1999. Oh, one yeah. of the places that he flipped it in 1999. Then the kink before Mulsan Corner just see it there it's uh, that elevation a little bit more pronounced on this version it's been flattened out on the real track since to stop accidents like that clk uh doing what it was doing real deal god has taken the lead symmetry is just about a tenth behind and then it's all about the braking into more sand corner very tentative on the brakes nobody's doing anything stupid but everything seems to be okay a couple of kicks of oversteer you can just see jake there in the 100 and uh, here come Mark Zeidler and Co. That's the wrong oh. way, sir, and you've lost your wheel. Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> I, I did say about three wheels on Janssen, those wagons. I think, that, uh, oh. had that unfortunate accident. That's not a good way to start the race. We're barely three minutes in. No, and there's more... Uh... Yeah, that um, Janssen's still going. Oh, there was someone else oh, ended up going. in the wall. Yeah, somebody else has ended up in the wall, so yellow out in Sector 2. <laughs> um... Uh, very kindly, Ian has just told us that the jump is a small issue with the mod and updates done with the physics, so yeah, it's going to be a little bit wonky. So don't worry, they are putting down the throttle as they're coming out of <laughs> out of that part of the circuit, coming out of Tetra Rouge. Netcode. Um, 
Yeah. Oh, ah, uh, and we've got our first DNF within the first five minutes. Nicoli B is uh, is out as the yeah. uh, three liter class cars are now at Arnage, and from here it is a flat out run, no Porsche curves, just straight on. As we can see in the top left hand corner of your screen, Simicic and Co. heading towards Maison Blanche and towards the uh, the start finish line to complete the first lap of this two hour race. And the cars very, very close to go. It's practically, practically uh, an oval at this point. Yes. Um, and, and look at the amount of dust there uh, picking up going through into Maison Blanche. I mean, that is just absolutely ridiculous. They must be pushing at least. Probably the best part of 150 miles an hour going through that. And, um, yeah, it's... I mean, now real deal God is starting to pull away from Jarno Simonsic. Gap is now about six-tenths of a second as they head in towards uh, Dunlop. And this this right-hand kink on the start-finish track, very, very deceptive here, I think. I think a lot of the corners are deceptive, especially if you're uh, used to cars with a little bit of downforce as... People like Simicic and Hillebrand are. Uh, Simicic racing in the LMP2 at the Virtual Le Mans series. You know, also racing, uh, I think he's racing DPIs in the Virtual Endurance Championship. So a little bit different to what he's used to at this particular track. Different layout, different car. And I, I found that I'm, I'm, I'm more of a, an open wheel formula type of driver. You, you drive a, a car that you know is going to stick every time you throw it into a corner. And then suddenly the car doesn't want to do that. And you're in a wall and you get very frustrated and... You have to relearn everything, but we've had uh, Road Dog, Finn, and Nicoly B out of the race as the five litres are now on the the Mulsanne. Probably just saving fuel here. No one's trying for a move. I keep expecting them to slam on the brakes, but they're not because it's, <laughs> there's no there's no chicanes. But like I said, three and a half miles. That's mm. straight. It's that like driving ridiculous. on the A15, isn't it? Yeah, sort of the or, other side of Lincoln, where it's dead straight. Or driving on part of the M1, where it is dead straight, and there's no variable speed limit, and you've got... <laughs> be like the BMW's German BMW's doing 140 basket. Yeah. <laughs> Whilst undertaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, here we go. This is a good view. Up behind the Brazilian. That is uh, Real Deal God. He'll be loving life at the minute, or being very stressed. Because, you know, it's... I mean, we, we make a big deal about it, how it being, you know, the situation. Like I've been saying, you know, the rounds. It's great to have the the pro eSports guys turn up, like Hillebrand, like Simicic, like Enzo Fatsi in, in a couple of other rounds, and not try hard it. Just treat it as it is a bit of fun. And everyone's having fun, not taking it too seriously, and having some great racing as a result. As uh, we've been told... That Declan and uh, Moralato are in the pits for repairs, barely two laps into this race. Well, Le Grand taketh and it, uh, Le Mans giveth and it taketh away. And at the moment, at least Real Deal God's having a a bit more opportunity of just leading the field, uh, other, unlike what we saw two rounds ago. But this is a a nice little battle. This will be for in the uh, in the three liter class, the Mighty D running in the Maserati. Uh, showing up in around about second position, but yeah, I think um, I mean Nico Hillbrand normally runs with Beeler Racing Euronics in the RCCO World EX Championship. So, and again, someone who's competed in rounds over the course of this uh, this championship, not being round for all of them because he's also doing uh, economies as a economics as a, a university as a student. Um, but still, to see him uh, competing in these old school cars is is, is quite a nice joy to see. Yeah, I suppose it's the, uh, it's the Christmas holidays for any students on the grid, so they're able to, to join in, not have to worry about doing anything for the next couple of weeks. So, yeah, I mean, my, my wife's a school teacher and they broke up yesterday, so, you know, you're in that final stretch between uh, between now and New Year, which, where has 2022 gone? We've had yeah, some great, uh, race, great uh, e sport racing in 2022, and it's going to continue into. 2023 is in January. It will be the uh, Virtual Le Mans finale. Hopefully Max Verstappen uh, doesn't bottle it again. We get to see oh. him in there for more than a, a few hours. But uh, Salami, yeah. everybody's favourite sandwich filling in fourth position in the mm -hmm. two-liter class. We're looking at him being chased by uh, Reese Gardner, Southpaw racer. 
probably probably one o'clock in the morning for him right now. So yeah, great, great dedication to the cause. Yeah, and like, just from that angle as yeah, from that angle yeah. as well, it doesn't doesn't look like the track we're used to, probably because it's not the track we're used to. Yeah, Austin Birchfield, we've just been informed, has also DNF was third in pre-qualifying in the Mercedes Benz. Uh, 300 SL, the 286. Um, Seedler leading the three litre class, sets uh, the fastest lap in the class, four minutes 6.490. Uh, Seedler was actually fastest in pre qualifying with the four minute 3.8. So, um, but, but also they've got to conserve the, you know, they've got to look at the fuel strategy uh, on this because going out for qualifying and pre qualifying, completely different kettle of fish altogether, as we both know, Aiden. And, and the racing is where lap times sometimes are not the most important thing in a race of this stature. No, especially at a track like this because the, the car is going to be very, very heavy with fuel. This is all simulated as part of our factor 2. The more fuel you, you put in, the slower you're going to be. So acceleration out of Tetra Rouge, top speed on the more sand, it's all going to be affected. Braking into some of these corners is going to be affected. But as that that fuel wears off, they will go a little bit quicker. You'll see the, the lap times drop. And they're all on bias ply tyres as well. So as they do the little kangaroo hop on the more sand, I'm glad they painted all the, the trees white as well so you could see them at, at night. It's, like I say, we're looking at 22, 2022 eyes. Yeah. But if you if you went there, if it looked like this today, you'd go, no, I'm not racing on that. <laughs> it's like, hell no. <laughs> it's like, I won't touch that with a barge pole. I'm off. See ya. Jackson Robillard in behind Yanni Simicic, Ferrari versus Ferrari. He's not making a move because he's trying to save fuel. And if you save a bit of fuel when you come in for your pit stop, you have less time because you don't have to fill up as much. So, oh, oh here we go. Sh Schneider's going around the outside. Hello. Diego Schneider in the 174 Jaguar D-Type. Uh, that's allowed, I mean, with the way that Real Deal God's just uh, cantered off into the lead, he's got about a four-second advantage over Yanni Simicic. But this is bringing back... Uh, Robbie Yard, Schneider, who was looking around the outside going into Mulzan Corner. Nico Hillbrand's not too far off from this, so about 1.1 seconds behind. So, yeah, it seems to be a, a pretty even mix in the top five between Ferrari and Jag at the moment. Yeah, it is. Uh, we've, we've figured out over the course of the season that the Ferrari is a little bit better in the top speed department, but the Jag's a bit better on the brakes. And the way the straights and heavy braking zones sort of equal out at this uh, particular type of track it has made them very, very equal. As uh, we've got this sort of group here of Simicic, Robillard, Schneider and Hillebrand all for second place. As uh, we see the 100 car of Jake just sliding out of Indy as they come up to Anage and then make the run towards the, the final few kinks before the start-finish line. There's Jake drifting on camera. Like and he was doing uh, it Yeah, like a <laughs> hundred. <laughs> and, uh, and then make their way towards the end. So... Jake's, as it stands, not going to win the championship. Uh, it's currently in the hands of Jono Simicic. But anything can happen in the next uh, one hour and 48 seconds. That's uh, so one hour and 48 minutes and 30 seconds. Yeah, I mean, looking back at the three litre classes, um, Mark Seidler's got a pretty good lead over Ujasu in the, in the Gordini by about 2.4 seconds. As, oh my goodness me. Jackson Robillard had that car's backside out, waggling away whilst trying to close in on Jono Simicic. And now, as they come across the start-finish line and head up into uh, Dunlop Corner, that jag just really seems to be... Uh, and, and again, even with looking at it with 2022 eyes, even with these 1950s cars here, Aiden, you're still going to get that, that dirty wash of air behind the car that you're chasing. And that's exactly what Jackson Robillard is having to struggle with at the moment. Yeah, especially into these sorts of corners here, because I mean, it does help that the camber, uh, so the camber is such that it is banked, so that does help the cars a little bit. Is he going to try and make a move into Tetris? No, he's still hanging behind Simicic here, but this is just allowing Real Deal God to pull away. But I guess for Robillard not in the championship fight, Simicic is in the championship fight. Real Deal God's got uh, zero chill and has just gone off into the distance while. Uh, well, everybody else is having a, a nice little scrapping behind. Now, I think we're going to have constant scrapping throughout all of this race. You look three, at the all past. three wide. Three Here we wide go. There going into the Salami. Oh dear. I was just about to say Salami was only about what 0.09 of a second off overtaking uh, whoever it is in front of him, Hammer. So 
it, like I say, everyone's battling, everyone's fighting. We might as well have had an Indy 500 at this point. Yeah. And they're both in the uh, the Maserati AG, uh, A6 GCS. So 358 playing 304 for third overall at the moment. Uh, the Mighty D is about 1.4 seconds up the road. And the two litre class is definitely the... Uh, it's a couple of Bristols uh, in there, but it's mainly become... I think we joked about this a couple of... Uh, a couple of months ago, that the two litre class is definitely the Maserati Cup. <laughs> well, this is the, one of the rules that has been in play throughout the whole season, is that once you've picked a car and you qualify for a race, you can only use that car if you come back for the next round. It's it's to stop that typical... I mean, you see it in other, other sims, don't you? It's like, okay, the Merc is the best track, at, the best car at this track, the Lambo is the best car at this track, the BMW Stopey, I'm just going to use that as... Whoa! There we go, that was a bit of a wiggle. Diego Schneider. I think it's just about to put himself in the lead. So Real Deal God lost a lot of time. No, he didn't. I'm looking at the wrong person. Real Deal God's gone. Right, we'll forget about him. I'll put a, like a post-it yeah. over his name. He, he's he's gone off into the distance. Seven seconds to the good. It's Schneider, Sh Schneider, Shimicic, Hillebrand and Robillard uh, that we, we need to we concern ourselves with. So that was Schneider that was getting all that was... Uh, Oh, sorry, it was uh, Hillebrand that was getting yeah. uh, all over the shop. Schneider's gone back into uh, second place. you then got Robbiard right at the back of this queue. Simicic is now in third. Are you keeping up, ladies and gentlemen, at home? Hmm. That sounded like a tongue twister when you were trying to say all their names in one fell swoop there, Aiden. Uh, um... English man destroys foreign, foreign words. <laughs> Are you surprised? Uh, no, because that's a running gag with us uh, British sim, the sim racing commentators. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, now now we see the the Jaguar pull away from the Ferrari quite easily, and that gap has extended to six and a half tenths of a second as we've got the the lovely picture-in-picture -picture shot. And this is one of the shots that we tend to like that we were, we were sort of drawing over at Dundrod, weren't we? You know the uh, the driver viewpoint, and uh, yeah, that that just goes to show how quickly the Jaguar can pull away from the Ferrari. So in terms of the pure waft, the pure grunt. Jaguar has the advantage, but the Ferrari, I mean, look how fast Giannou Simicic is closing on Diego Schneider, and now is pulling along behind him, so he's getting the bump draft going over the start-finish straight. And they've uh, gotten away from Hillebrand and Hobbyard at the moment uh, in the battle for P2. Yeah, Real Deal God says, sets the fastest lap overall of a 3.53. And uh, just looking at this this view that we've got of Simicic here, the driver's wearing no gloves. Yep. He's wearing, let's be honest, he's wearing a horse racing hat. Mm -hmm. He's got a pair of sunglasses on to stop stuff. But I, I, I recently had the experience of I've been taken around Silverstone in a in a radical, and I didn't have gloves on. I had a, a full face crash on. I had the hands device. I had the bally. But it was raining, and getting hit in the hands by pieces of rain. It was like I was being shot at, and it, oh. it, it it hurt. So, what? I can't imagine like these guys getting out of the cars, and they must have had welts all over their hands from stones and bits of rubber. And <laughs> why did they put themselves through it? I don't know. They had stones. They did, yeah. So. <laughs> I, 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 I think being thrown that, out folks. <laughs> there is a, a fine line between brave and crazy, isn't there? Uh, yes. Jumping out of a tree, that's not brave. That's a stupid. That is not Sisu. Robert. is still holding the, uh, the slipstream. I mean, it must look boring for people that aren't really familiar with this kind of racing, but... I mean, Alain Prost was able to, to win 51 Grand Prix by driving the bare minimum, so... Yeah. Yannick Simcic can do it too. Yeah, and Schneider's probably... Uh, well, they, they're coming up amongst uh, backmarker traffic, and that's going to, again... I mean, that's within 18 minutes. And, oh, under breaking, Schneider gets the back end all happy. And Guy uh, Ledeus is now... 
uh, gone into the wall and he has been the latest casualty. Uh, the 258 and the 3 litre class with the Gordini T24S, so that's another casualty. Um, I wonder how many people have had wheel, wheels uh, dismembered from their wagon. We haven't seen that many of them because the racing in this particular event here, Aiden, has been a lot more, I wouldn't say the word calm, I would say it's been a lot more constructive, to be honest. I, I, I don't know if it's because people know the track, if that makes any sense. Obviously, it's a slightly different layout. I mean, there's there's also a historic... Uh, Monte Carlo in uh, in our factor two, which is absolutely brilliant. I suggest that people go and try that out in in the the 1966 Brabham that's available as stock content. You sort of know it from the modern games and things like that, but then you you just have to adapt to okay, this corner slightly different, this guy's like uh, this corner slightly different. So I think they just know it a little bit better than they did say uh, Longford or Alaman or Dundrod. So that they're kind of got the experience of driving here without the experience of driving here, if that, if that makes any sense, because it, it's a very, very popular and very uh, well-travelled track, if that... You know, you know where I'm coming from with this? Yeah. Oh, real deal. God. <laughs> Almost uh, Ch uh, Charles he... bottled it. <laughs> oh, goodness, he would have... Uh, that would have been... He would never have lived that going... down. No. No, I don't think so. You know, you know who else crashed out of Le Mans at the final corner? It was Max Verstappen. Mm -hmm. Wasn't that wasn't that on the same event that he got beaten by just one one thousand of a pole position? It was, yeah. Um, that same year. I mean, there's also um, you know Toyota breaking down. Um, trigger warning. Yep. In the audience. Yeah. Uh, don't mention it to Kaz Nakajima. <laughs> That's all I'm saying on that one. Uh, where's his Twitter? Uh... <laughs> I can I can feel my ears burning with Aiden scrambling on the keyboard frantically right about now. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, just looking back at all three classes at the moment, we've got um, Real Deal God leading by nearly six seconds in the five litre. Mark Zeidler leading... Uh, Rujasu by nearly 7.8 seconds and Oscar de Cantonen leading uh, Salami uh, Salami by uh, over 6.1 seconds in the battle for the 2 litre class class victory um, but yeah still uh, still pretty good that they're keeping it um, you know there's, there's been a lot I mean there's a lot of people getting a bit too close to that grass for my liking though Aiden. Nakajima's 2016 Le Mans victory is next to his 2009 F1 points. Zero. <laughs> People can be brutal in, on the internet. Oh, can't they? they can. They can. I was I was going to pick up on a point that you just made, but my, my, my train of thought has been uh, neutered slightly. Uh, can't remember what it was now. In the meantime, yeah. Brilliant Hammer trying to still close on uh, Sal Army for P2 in the, the class we affectionately call the. That was it. Ah, the nice. uh, the the pseudonyms people have been using. We've had yes. Sal Army, we've had Charles Leclerc. <laughs> we've had, we've had a we've had a good. A, I mean, I, I would have raced as the uh, the Hungarian racing sensation made up Nem. Uh, that would have been <laughs> that would be, that would have been mine, but. Uh, uh, yeah, and I think, they, they, yeah, were, I think... they were quite common, these uh, pseudonyms, especially if it was people from aristocratic families, because they didn't want their parents to know that they were racing, and they didn't want didn't want to get cut out of the family inheritance because it was too dangerous and things like that. Uh, I, can't remember, I think, uh, was it Wolf, Wolf, Wolfgang von Trips did it? Yeah. Uh, that wasn't his real name, and a few others... So I, I think it was Jochen Rint used his, it was his inher inheritance because he was orphaned and he spent that on racing. So if you could, you would, wouldn't you? It's like Jimmy Broadbent using Jammer Wanglebork <laughs> on a lot of the leagues that he does, uh, for instance. And like, he would just go, yep, Jammer's back. <laughs> but it's, just, it's, it's also, it gets quite comedic at times, doesn't it, as well? Yeah, especially if you if you come up with a, a very clever one, because people are going to talk about it, and you're going to get on the on the stream more often. Yeah, um, uh, including a particular driver in the DTM, uh, John Winter, and that was actually not his real name. It was uh, 
it was another it was another pseudonym. Uh, Johnny Dumfries as well. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. John Winter actually uh, his original name was Lewis Cargas, so who competed all the way through. Who completed? Who competed in the? Uh, well, if anyone might remember a particular crash in the DTM in the mid 1990s, Danny Juicer, a good friend of mine, uh, was actually there and saw it happen. Uh, his Opel Calibra, run by the uh, the, the great Keki Rosberg, got yeeted and literally went into a fireball. Oof. Yeah. So the the only massive uh, touring car crash that ever gets played is uh, Tarquini at Knockhill in '94, with the illegal Alpha. Still bitter about that. Mm -hmm. well, the iconic words of the late Murray Walker saying, It's Tarquini! <laughs> How did that happen? Well, he, he rolled it, Murray. <laughs> <laughs> I th actually, a lot of it was him commentating on highlights. So it, was, it wasn't it was as in the moment as people think it was. He, he carefully So I'm going for first as John Clellan. That wasn't... That was pretty much scripted. Uh, rather than uh, an in-the-moment thing, so it, it, it's, it's kind of like finding out that wrestling is fake, isn't it? I've just, I've just taken the the magic off it. Well, nice move by Rajasu to uh, get up into second position, and that was on Woodcock, uh, Richard Woodcock, who was actually second in pre-qualifying, but nearly a second behind Mark Ziedler. Ziedler's just absolutely romped away with this one of the three-liter class. I think uh, I've just. I think also we've had our first pit stop through the mighty D in uh, the two liters. Yeah, real deal. God's uh, leads dropped off a little bit. Sort of shrunk by about two and a half seconds. Uh, it's, it's down to, to four point eight. So uh, probably the car just needing to adjust a little bit as the fuel's burning off. Uh, the I think they have got like three X fuel and two X tires on something like that. So they they will have to stop. So. Uh, they will have to make at least two uh, pit stops, which is why you see them saving as much fuel as you as they possibly can to shorten that fuel fill at the pit stops. Maybe gain, even if it's if it's only a couple of tenths, it, it can make the difference uh, come the end of the race. So, Silverwolf fight, uh, fighting with uh, Reese Gardner up ahead of them. Another battle around the outside of the Dunlop chicane. Uh, Salami. I think that scared him a little bit. I think he might need to check his underwear after the pit stop. <laughs> after that one, it's like, oh, I didn't want to go that wide. <laughs> Everyone hops onto the Mulsan. <laughs> Literally hopped on yep. the Mulsan. <laughs> great, great sounding cars as well. Yeah, Richard Woodcock's just uh, taken second place back off of Rujasu, uh, going onto the Mulzan. So, nice little battle for second in the class, even though Mark Ziedler's gone up the road to about the tune of 8.8 .8 seconds. That lap, that gap, you were mentioning about it just a second ago, between uh, Real Deal God and Diego Schneider, uh, Aiden. Has uh, well did drop at one point to its lowest it's been since the beginning of this race, so about 3.8 seconds. But now with the the power on that Jaguar, uh, he's now extended that back up to probably another further second. So getting close to 4.8 is the lead between Real Deal God and Schneider at the moment in the in the overall classification. See some more flip flopping of positions if Reese Gardner has his way. Chasing yep. Silverwolf, only about a tenth behind. Driving in the Australian colours of uh, basically British racing green and gold. It's almost like yep. a posh Norwich city he's driving. <laughs> the uh, colours yep. of uh, Jack Brabham. Yep, currently used by the esports team run by Sun David nowadays. I know um, nothing about them. Uh, but like the the one in the D. Edwards saying, did you ever watch the clip of Murray commentating on snooker when on Clarkson's chat show? Yes, and it was priceless. <laughs> Simicic looking to take uh, third place back from 
Nico Hillebrand, these two know each other pretty well from doing the uh, the R Factor 2 stuff. And just out having a bit of a laugh on the Saturday afternoon. As they boing it onto them all once again. <laughs> again, again, it's it's, 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 it's basically R Factor 2's version of netcode. Just, yep. just pretend it's not there. That could be a pretty good uh, HRRC meme, couldn't it? Silver Wolf's Boinging out. onto the mole's hand. <laughs> oh, and Silver Wolf's just DNF'd. In the 2 litre class, so not too sure what happened to him. We'll try and grab a replay of that if we can. Because we know people love to see the wipeouts. Yep. Gary Canton to the shock of literally nobody has gone fastest in his class. <laughs> 16 and a half seconds over <laughs> over Salami. Plenty of seats. We need we, we need some uh, individual BOP for next season if it happens. <laughs> yeah, he, he's got to start five seconds behind the field <laughs> for each race. <laughs> Just like that, Eden, we're a quarter of the way through the race. Just under an hour and a half to go. The Simicic is really, really trying to uh, put the Frighteners on Hillbrand. They'll, they know each other, as you said, very, very well. But a tighter line taken into Indianapolis before they uh, head to towards... Thought to switch back him into, yeah, <laughs> into I was like thinking, Yeah, I, I was like thinking... He would. <laughs> oh, he... Uh, yes. Oh, here's yes. Adoro's uh, just smacked a wall as we get a replay. Of, uh, I'm, I'm assuming this is going to be uh, Silver Wolf. I think, yeah. Silver Wolf, yeah. Does he just overcook it into? Uh, I'm turning towards Indy. Is that? Oh, oh! <laughs> they can, can, we, can, we, can we get? A, can we get another angle of that, Dan? Because oh, I don't know. did that he was... hit the tree? Well, he he must have done. Oh, oh he, he, he did hit the tree. I hope he wasn't on a direct drive. <laughs> oh dear me! Uh, if you if you hit a wall or you know you're going to a wall in our factor two and using a direct drive, take your hands off the off the wheel because yeah. it will snap and it it hurts. Yeah, I, I actually because I, I use a Formula rim and it's got like pointy ends on the uh, on the bottom. It spun around, it cracked on the on the top of the oh. of my hand yeah. and it was bruised for a couple of weeks. It really hurt. Yeah, um, Simicic trying to sweep wide going through Dunlop on Hillebrand, as there is the yellow out in sector one. Yeah, um, they all see Dion Hansen's gone off the track as well. Uh, so plenty of uh, attrition now starting to affect the ranks, I think, here, Aiden. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is another thing that happens with these cars. The brakes will overheat and they lose their, their braking performance. And if you've uh, got the blanking a bit too high, it, it could be could be something that's happening, especially as uh, Huaguerri, or Huaregui, so I apologise, uh, has uh, copped himself a penalty, probably for track limits or, or something similar. Mm. And that's normally regulated by the server anyway, so... Yeah, it is. Oh, 30 second penalty for Isidoro, avoidable con uh, contact for rear ending Dion Hansen. Oh, okay. Ian Munro, you cheeky little devil. Yes. Doing it yourself with server commands. Show off. There's always one, isn't there? Ah, oh, dear. He thinks he's Jimmy Allison, bless him. <laughs> he's not thinking he's Eduardo Freitas, is he? <laughs> <laughs> No, more Michael Mazzi. 
He's going he's to rig it for, for Jake to win it on the, in the last five minutes. Mm. Yeah, then all of a sudden, you know, you'll get a penalty for doing absolutely nothing wrong. <laughs> well, like Montoya did at uh, Indianapolis in 2003, was it? Oh, yes. Got got smashed into by Barrichello and, it, oh, yeah, it's Montoya's fault. Uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Jackson Robbiard up the uh, back bottom of uh, Jacob Demarais. We'll use his proper French name as he's uh, in uh, France. Speaking of France, Erwan Berger in his Gordini. He's uh, trying to make a move on uh, Johnson for fourth in that three litre class. But there's a nice little train there, so we'll have to keep a uh, keep an eye on that. It's one car getting a little bit offline and then getting a bit slidey. I like how also it took nearly half an hour to, to give that penalty out. So yes, he is Eduardo Freitas. Or the F1 uh, stewards. And Isidoro is now DNF'd. Oh dear. He'd rather die than take that penalty. <laughs> Let's see if we can get a replay of his, uh, his DNF there. The top three has been filled by the Jags. Real Deal God's lead slowly coming down. Schneider 3.5 behind. Hillebrand 5.8 behind. Uh, well, he's 5.8 behind Schneider, I should say. And then Simic is just about a quarter of a second behind Hillebrand. And then Jake 10.5 behind them. So. As uh, YouTube chat is debating on the correct pronunciation of Simoncic. Tom Lane in the wall. That will be the reason for these yellow flags, I think. Hello. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, like someone just it's randomly like, joining the race. It's like it's sort of like a uh, continuing on three wheels, apparently, courtesy of Ian Munro. Oh, and there then oh, that is. A whoops. That's not good. That's... Where is that? Is that... I want to say that's, that's Arnage. Yeah, I think that's Arnage that he's just come out of. Going for the, the Michael Schumacher strap. Or the uh, Lewis Hamilton at Silverstone strap. Oh, it happened... Uh... Yeah, I think... It uh, happened at well, Indy, so yeah, that was uh, our Naja. He's just come out of. Mr. Magoo has been promoted into fifth in the two litres. Nate Cowan here in the Bristol. Oh, and then Brandon Simicic are literally still with each other right now. Yeah, he's not been able to get past um, get past him, but Jake's now. I think Jake's now up into P5, so this makes the championship even more exciting, doesn't it? Yep. So I think as it stands, uh, Jake has got the title, but still got an, just under an hour and a half to uh, to do what they got to do. So we're approaching the 40-minute mark here. Pit stops should be happening in a bit. Yellow out in sector three. Yep. Wondering if that's happened possibly maybe at Arnage or maybe at Maison Blanche or possibly Indy. Speaking of the first pit stops, Oscari Cantonin. Alberto Oscari himself is in the pits. So the way this will work in our Factor 2 is they will dive into the pit lane to the right of that yellow line and then pull into their pit box. And unlike in other simulations on the market, there is collisions in the pit lane in our Factor 2. So if they try to drive through people to get to their box or their box is filled, they are 
that well, they are they are they are in trouble because they will damage their cars. Great little battle here. Now this is for the de facto class lead at the moment because Canton still in the pit lane, but Hamart's been flirting with the barriers and is sideways. <laughs> oh dearie me, that was coming towards Tetra Rouge. Um, and Diego Schneider, we've just been informed, has uh, hit the wall. There's a yellow out in six to th sector three. That was an Indy, and he's also got three wheels on the wagon. And there is said 174 Jaguar. Oh dear. Schneider was running right at the top of uh, the, the standings as well. So we'll see if we can get a replay of what happened to him, because uh, I can't recall if he was uh, fighting with anybody at, uh, at any point. So this puts Jake into fourth. Simicic uh, holding ahead of him. Hillebrand uh, has dropped off from the back of Real Deal God as it so happens. So that gap's gone back up again. So that's Real Deal God's just uh, pumping in some fast laps before he pits. Um, there we go. He's uh, he's pitted. <laughs> I am so good at this. Speak of the devil and he doth dive into pit lane. <laughs> Salami still having to battle away with uh, Aurelien Hamar for the uh, for the lead in the two liter class. <laughs> when you just did the uh, the 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 Kota meme a bit earlier on in the broadcast, like yeah, that's exactly what we're getting right now with these two liters. They're like little <laughs> buzzing hornets, aren't they? <laughs> they're, 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 they're kind of like uh, someone described them as being like a kink song. That that really? was trapped in a tin can oh, sound that the yeah. Kinks had back in the sixties. It's kind of like that, but turn it to eleven. Yeah. Oh, another yellow out in sector one. It's now been retracted. There you go, folks. Some wasps in a can ASMR there for you. So this is a replay of uh, Diego heading towards uh, Indy. Ah, he's just overshot oh. it. <laughs> it's like to, um, which what, which circuit did it? Is it? Oh well, he's he's still got he's still got three wheels, uh, four wheels on the car, and then the wheel just gives way after that. Yeah, I think there's a the, there's uh, a bit of a. I think it's just the way the replays in our factor two render themselves. So. He's basically overshot the kink and just smacked into that um, into that embankment, and then uh, let's just rip the wheel off as the alert goes fastest in the three-liter class. Seventeen seconds to the good against Rizat uh, Rizassi. It's a bit like turn eight to Adelaide for V8 uh, for Australian supercars. Oh yeah, it? you get it wrong and you're in the wall. Uh, and as uh, Mr. Good Schneider thing those things are right-hand drive, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Just making moves now. It's a real deal. God must have uh, entered Le Pit Lane. Yeah. So Hillebrand leading barely from Simicic. Hillebrand hasn't wrapped it around a tree yet, which is uh, encouraging. I know there was yeah. a, there's a bit, bit, few jokes going on in Discord that's, that Nico will have it wrapped around a tree. And if he's streaming this as well, guaranteed he's wearing his goggles, his hat, and his polo shirt. Proper roleplay. Oh, what on Twitch? I'm, if that's the case, then I'm just going to see if I can find it and have a look and, and laugh at his expense, of course. Gonna have to put the lights on in here, it's getting a bit dark. Yeah. Yes, and it is confirmed he's <laughs> with the full on chin strap as well. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, 
cosplay in sim racing at its finest. Saying that, uh, I know a guy who's uh, got himself a full race suit of the uh, the esports team he drives for. So some people have uh, either got more money in sense or they take it very very seriously. As Simicic brings his uh, Ferrari into the pit lane, or oh, stopped a bit too early, gets it into the box and uh, he'll get that thing serviced. So that put uh, so Hellebrand, Simicic. Jake and Robbiard all in the pit lane here. Morea might also be coming in as well. And if you've got the link there, Alex, if you could just put it into the uh, into the chat because people want to see that. Uh, right. Well, I've put the link in. <laughs> it's probably not going to show, is it? Oh, there we go. <laughs> What a champion. Uh, with the full-on chin strap as well. Uh, Moralato spun coming onto the Malzan, apparently. <laughs> that's amazing. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> Just for giggles. Oh, and this battle's still going on in the 2-litre. Or the Maserati Cup. Probably getting uh, instructions from Le Bono that it's hammer time. <laughs> Pete Bonington, hon hon. Le Bono, my tires. <laughs> Oh, and uh, Yano's got a problem, I believe. He's continuing, but very, very slowly, apparently, thanks to our... And he's got three... Uh, has he got three wheels? No, he hasn't. I'm wondering if there's a problem on that front for him, because it's a bit of a disaster for, for Yano. Oh, now, did he have a problem with fueling up? That's what it was saying when it, uh... He's driving around with virtually no fuel in the tank, isn't he? This might hand Jake the title, you know? Yep. Matty Sinclair saying... Uh... Yeah, it, 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 when, it, when we went on to um, Nico's stream, it was saying that he wasn't wasn't giving him a pit service. Oh dear. And that's what it looks like on the M1 when you've got a BMW flight past you. <laughs> when you've gone from a 60 to a 50 speed limit. Not so smart motorways. <clears throat> yeah, because as soon as you jump onto the M1, it's always when you see variable speed limit now active, and you're like, "Oh God, really?" And then as soon as it, as soon as it goes, variable speed limit ends here. Like everyone's like, "Ray!" <laughs> oh, Matt's just put on the chat. Did he do the Delatraz and forget to pay his crew? <laughs> That's harsh. Was that Jean Denis hard. or Louis? <laughs> <laughs> so Owen Bourdieu is going slowly as well. Has he had the same same problem as Yerne? Right. Or was he being lapped? He, he just looked like he was going very, very slowly and then... Uh... Now he's sped up again. As Morea brings his car in. So does Magoo. Magoo's just been in there for about 43 seconds and I think he's just leaving the pit lane. Well, 
Well, we haven't seen much of Scooby in this race, though, have we? In, in the no, we haven't. Class. He's now. And there is Real Deal God. He got very, got very, very close. That was to, uh, um, I think that's the one of the 500 cars that that was coming through. One of the Mercs, possibly. Ah, Mr. Rondini's just um, saying in chat. Jacob said that if you cross the white line by just a an inch you don't get served could that have been the issue yeah these old pit lanes can get quite picky about entering because of the way the because of the way the they're programmed the Ferrari jokes are coming out from the journey. Did the Ferrari Ferrari. Nice one. James McHenry, thank you very much for that. <laughs> was it Eddie Irvine, 1999, the European Grand Prix, when they... When, well, it was Luxembourg Grand Prix back then. Yep. When they, when they, had, they had a committee meeting us. Are we putting this wheel on or not? It, just stick it, stick it on and send him out, was Martin Brundle's quip in the commentary. If I remember correctly, just stick him out. There. Stick it on there. Don't have a debate. Just stick it on there and send him out. I still remember when what was it? Michael Schumacher actually managed to win a race in the pit lane, didn't he? Yeah. 1998. Silverstone. Yep. Oh, Morelato's had another drama. He's just spun off at Indy. Unfortunately, Morelato can't blame that one on Mattia Binotto. Oh, and there is the... And that is Morelato. What a place to spin it as well. It's just before Arnage, isn't it? Yeah. It's been a good turnaround for Jake. He's now in third after being uh, quite, quite far back. Yeah. Trash tag blessed with that Hamilton luck. Uh, Yene has made it back to the pit lane, folks. So hopefully this time he gets uh, gets. Going to be a lap down when the when this oh. is all done. Hundred and ninety seconds. Be, yeah. That's it. That is, yeah. If they're running, what was it? Real deal. God was doing earlier on. He's doing three, three fifty threes, three fifty fours. So that is, um, um, yeah. That 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 is that is going to smart for Yerni after what's just happened. I was at a LAN event. For a, a 25, oh, sorry, a 24 hour, well, it was technically a 25 hour race because the clocks went back halfway through. Oh, God. And yeah. um, a car hadn't uh, put in a fuel in and it had to drive around on the on the pit limiter around the track to get back to the pit. And when they did, you just heard this audible way in from the back where all the teams were. <laughs> so everybody had a everybody had a good, good joke about it. Oh. Yeah, I I always hate it when you when you have that kind of event on a weekend where the, t the clocks go back and you just like think, well, welcome back. It's two o'clock, and it's like, and then your mind tries to compute. Hang on a second, we just said that an hour ago. <laughs> well, we we we'd, we'd been up. We, we were up for like a stupid amount of time because that morning we'd watched England play. Um, it's like England play South Africa or New Zealand in the Rugby World Cup. Uh, oh yeah. So we got up to watch that, then did the 24 hours, and then <laughs> watched the Mexican Grand Prix. So we were just dead. Oh. Oh 
Oh, Godfather. That was yeah, Dan yes. Daniel saying, yeah, I remember, the South African. <laughs> Imagine thinking that rugby's a real sport. Oh, <laughs> you went there. <laughs> and cricket. Oh, uh, yeah, I think we've had further further news of another person that has decided to spin at Mulzan, and that was Declan. Brush over, shot it, and then spun. Oh, and now the question, League or Union now drops in the chat, Aiden. Now it's on video for when Aiden says I got to witness England win two World Cups. Yes, I did. Unfortunately, it was the Rugby and Cricket World Cups. Oh, no. <laughs> Counts. It's coming home. Mm -hmm. The percentage chance with saying that on those particular events does help to increase the chances of that happening. Seen the five liters just pass the the other classes like they're not even there. Yeah, that was a uh, real deal. God going past the three eighty six of Morilato. Can you imagine Jake putting together the highlights of this? I was like, oh, I can't oh use God. that. They're talking about cricket. Can't use that. They're talking about rugby. I haven't made any basketball or baseball references yet. No, we won't. <laughs> Go so each their own. Jace. <laughs> And the Bruins. Uh, just as a quick note, Morea hasn't been in the pits for seven minutes and twenty-seven seconds. That's just the uh, the broadcast uh, graphics ha having a having a bit of a moment. We'll just uh, we'll just turn them off and turn them back on again. There we go. <laughs> the Control Out Delete button uh, setup has been used, folks. <laughs> Five. F5. Five. F5. Five. <laughs> Damn it. That's actually a good point. There is no battles. Liam spun and continued, apparently. At Indy. People are going off at Indy. Is there some oil down there or something? It's half factor 2 had an update that we don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> we get the, the, Mulzan, uh, the Mulzan hop. Uh, we've got the oil slick at Indy. Where's the slippery surface flags? They didn't have anything like that back then. <laughs> That's actually an idea for a video. When were these flags first used? I'll, I'll note that down for Monday. Mm -hmm. And then I'll completely forget about it and do something like... <laughs> how, how fast can a modern Formula 1 car lap? I don't know. The Norris ring. Bloody hell. <laughs> We're getting the Mario Kart references. No. Not no oil, just a strategically placed banana peel. Who's got the invisibility stars on standby then? <laughs> <laughs> One more bar and I've got to pay for the song. Ah, oh, damn it. Well technically it's parody, so it's fair use, so. Yeah? That's why whenever I, whenever I work with David Christie and I go, David, have you got the uh, Jaws music on standby? And he'll just, <laughs> he'll, he'll just do it vocally. <laughs> the Trams are having a, a quiet race there in fifth, in uh, three litres. This is probably the closest battle we've got on track right now. The Gordini T24. S model and uh, chasing down the 218 on the run between what appears to be Mulsanne and Indy. Oh, we could see a moment where our two main championship protagonists might be well, one might be lapping the other very shortly, and that's Jake closing on Yerne. 
Jake closing on UNA to lap him. There they are. We'll just pretend that it's for position. Yep. In fact, I've only ever seen Yone Simcic have one bad race because of... Uh, what's a skill issue? Uh, just, like, a bad race in general. That was Formula Pro at, at Laguna Seca. Uh, earlier this year. This time it's been because of a glitch in the matrix, but sort of de deprived us of a, uh, of a of a race for the for the championship. But as uh, Iona Albuquerque says, he could just do this Michael Schumacher way and just take him out. But that would mean that Jake wins the championship. So <laughs> yeah, because yeah, there's a bit of a flaw in your little plan there. <laughs> You've hit him in the wrong place. <laughs> I didn't work, Michael. You hit the wrong part of him, my friend. <laughs> Martin Brunel said whilst, while smiling with glee. <laughs> Although, yeah, they will have to respect blue flags here, so... Yes. He'll have to sort of allow Jake through without... Uh, without impeding him too much. Probably just like a little bit of a lift of the gas. And let Jake through. Uh, R Factor 2 will probably start shouting at him. Oi! <laughs> it's when it's, I think there's. Uh, I don't know if they've changed it, but I think actually I think they did change it where uh, where it starts showing you the blue flags later rather than sooner because it will start yelling at you, let this guy through, and then give you a penalty. And it's like the guy was five seconds behind me, so what was the point in lifting off? Uh, Jake has got through though. Case of champagne to Norberto, Font uh, Norberto Fontana there. He let the jag through with no issue. I can imagine on uh, Jake's stream, he's probably thinking, why haven't I gained a place? Does he know? Is he aware? So we've just uh, reached the halfway point of this race. Thank you to everybody that's uh, still here and enjoying this afternoon's festivities. Wherever you are in the world. Not a good battle for fourth place, though, in, in three litres here, uh, Aiden. With uh, Nitramson right up the back bump of uh, Berkeley at the moment. Matt, so you've, you've just jinxed it, man. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Matt, so what do you like? <laughs> he put those two iconic words in yeah. and then straight away. Where are the bots? And here they are. <laughs> blame, yeah, hashtag blame Matsu <laughs> on that one. <laughs> oh, right. This could be a side by side. It will be a side by side, and nitramson has got past the fourth. Nice little use of the uh, side draft there, as well as the slipstream. Real Dual God still keeping the uh, the gap there at uh, eight point five, which is uh, pretty good. And it's Nico, Jake, Jackson, Robbiard. And uh, Morea. It's basically the Jag show out there at the minute in 5 litre. 3 litres is being led by Max. And then the, and then the 2 litres is basically the Maserati show. Yeah, and Oscari Sisu Cantonen has got a gap over Salami of uh, 26 and a half seconds and climbing. Um, kind of knew that was going to be a case. I mean, Dundrod was a perfect uh, mm. opportunity for Oscari Cantonen to not only win win the class but also I think if I remember correctly Aiden he actually won the, the overall race didn't he he did yeah because uh, while the, the five litres could 
grab it all back on the straights, just through the, the, the corners, the two litres were just superior in, I mean, it's Oscari Cantonin as well, he's just <laughs> been able to do stuff in that car that nobody else has been able to do. Simicic in seventh with uh, GP laps in front. Sticking with him though, probably just trying to save fuel. I think the, the best thing that Yerne can hope for is that Jake or Nico or any of the other drivers fall victim to that same bug he encountered. Yeah. In the words of Christian Horner, he needs a miracle. <laughs> Ella could be put there. <laughs> At least there's no multi-21 here. Look, I told you, you, you don't do that. I made my position very clear on this. <laughs> Talked about it before. <laughs> Such a good sounding car, this uh, Ferrari, isn't it? Oh yeah, lovely. Imagine what it'd be like with the new sound engine in R Factor 2. Oh my. Uh, clean up on aisle 3, anyone? Oh, Aurelian's just DNF'd. Hamar, who was battling away with uh, Salami earlier on. That is going to promote Reese Gardner and the Mighty D up to 3rd and 4th. Hammer out, which is uh, a shame. He's doing quite well. These two have been going for a while, haven't they? Yeah, handbags have definitely been out since dawn. And they have been lapped by the race leader, because <laughs> that was Oscar de Cantonen, uh, just ahead of them. Or well, the race leader in two litre, I should say. Class leader. Ooh, okay. Disco fever for uh, for Hamart then, as oh, we're getting no. through our ears. I think I've just heard someone spinning in the background. I heard a very very long screech of tyres. Oh. Unless they were just drifting, but... <laughs> oh, Real Deal God's just... Oh, Real Deal God's just gone off at Indy. The first mistake for the 182. Well, at least he didn't uh, uh, beach it on one of those sand dunes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or, or one of the grass verges. I know, Dave Edwards, it's uh, quite a shock that someone spun at Indianapolis in this race. <laughs> you think? <laughs> well, that was a lovely uh, panoramic helicopter shot we just saw just then as Real Deal God goes grass tracking again, and there's oh, Nico Hillbrand, and again! Oh, oh no, Real Deal oh, God is it. off! And he's collected the 218, and that was Toby Johnson in the, uh, in the three litre class, and there is three wheels on that wagon. Oh, dearie me, Real Deal God has got it that out. Well. Yeah. That is uh that is suboptimal, as they say. That means Jake's gonna get second. And now. 
Yep. Still 25 seconds behind uh, Hillebrand, though. Real deal, God must be counting his lucky stars, because at least he was quite close to the pit lane ent entry anyway. So this is the, the accident that caused uh, Hillebrand to, to gain on uh, Real Deal God. On the run down towards Indianapolis here. So you just uh, overcook it. He's on the inside. Hey. Excuse me, he's on the inside. Oh, he's, yeah. I think he was trying to lap Reese Gardner and overcooked it. Don't know if that um, messed up his suspension or his toe or anything like that. Got the car crabbing a little bit. 216 is uh, in behind. And then it went the way we saw it happen, so. At least Simicic is going to get a lap back with the the amount of time that, that Real Dilgo is going to be spent in the pit lane. Yeah, I noticed in the replay that it looked like the, the right rear was locking up quite significantly for Real Deal God, and that's when he went straight on at Indy. So I think it's probably about 150 metre meter board i think he just realized oh, i'll just outbreak myself and has just gone literally pedal to the floor and yeah it's just gone all kinds of wrong we'll try and get a, a replay of the uh the other incident just to see exactly what happened so jake sort of stayed in it uh, he was off the the timing screens for a long time and now he's in second place so We'll probably speak to Jake at the end of the uh, the race as we hit the final 50 minutes. Heel and towing it into all sand here. It's a completely different corner now, isn't it? Okay, so we're just about to see what happened with Real, Real Deal God. He's in the, the sort of green and purple car here. Cut the grass. And then oh, we just tag. tagged. So did the car not turn in properly because of the damage? And then... Okay, so there's, there's nothing malicious in that. No. I think that, that that's an accident that could have happened at any point during the 1950s. Yeah. And it was uh, definitely a, a disco for Aurelian, so not great. Yeah, considering he was running as high up at one point in P2 whilst battling away with the Cell Army. And yeah, I think uh, we were both of the same opinion that that instant between Real God and, um, and Toby Johnson, that was just a, a sheer racing incident, both going for the same bit of real estate that just happened. Fuel saving from Symmetry, you can just hear him lifting out. Less air resistance on the car, therefore he can use less fuel while driving at the same sort of speed. track will be uh, rubbering in as well as time goes by. I don't know if they've put a, a rubber preset on, but the dynamic rubbering system of R Factor 2, which is one of my favourite features of the sim, actually. This is that the more you drive, the more it rubbers up, the more grip you get. The faster you go. Just like in uh, just like in real life. Yeah. I think we're probably not too far away from those... Um second round of pit stops I would believe Aiden third if you get any Simicic well put I only deal in facts
the Tramzant, and uh, Rajasu, I think, is. Uh... Oh, yeah. sorry, but, but yeah. With another. There's one of the Mercedes cars in behind. Well, they're still going at it, these two. Yeah, they've got Declan Brush and the 290 and uh, Mercedes just behind them. And it's the fourth time they've uh, <laughs> they've swapped position in this race, so they're probably uh, probably enjoying themselves. So there's no sort of I don't think they're not they're not in a, a Discord voice chat, so they're not working together. They're, they're enemies on track, but they'll probably have a good laugh about it after the fact. Maria in fourth up against uh, Jackson Robillard, slipstreaming up the Mulsanne, coming up to Mulsanne corner. I'll we'll have to try and get pulled up without ramming into the back of anybody else that's in the immediate vicinity here. The Belgian following the American. The British Racing Green Jag. So the cars painted as they would have been in the 1950s using manufacturer colours or national colours or a mix of, of both. So you could have a, a British Racing Green Jag with uh, uh, an Italian red stripe on it or or something to that effect, or the the colours of your city, the colours of your county. It's you know, there's no none of these over the top esports liveries going on. Make it look as realistic as possible, as immersive as possible. Yellow in sector one. This cars come through Indy here. Maralato spun. That was the reason for for that yellow flag, apparently. Oh, third time's the charm then for for Maralato. That's three spins he's had this uh, this race. I think. Frank for Planken in uh, fifth in two litres. Eight seconds behind Andrews, who is 30 seconds behind Gardner, who is 22 seconds behind Army, who is 36 seconds or 37 seconds behind Canton. And so that two litre car is very, very spread out. Especially now we've got a Bristol 450 in fourth place. I think that's the first time this race we've actually seen a Bristol in the top five in the affectionately uh, Maserati League actually called Maserati League by us I think through the majority of this season but Robbie are cutting the grass twice in rapid succession going through Maison Blanche um, but Moray was right up his exhaust pipes at one point but now that gap has expanded to about 1.6 seconds Reese Gardner in third place now into pit lane. What could be... Well, we've got another yellow out in sector one. So there seems to be a yellow out in sector one or sector three for the majority of this race as we see uh, Morea do the Mulzan hop. Now is 2.5 seconds behind Jackson Hobby Yard. And there... Oh, Eduardo Beninka has just DNF'd as well. Uh, and actually, he was the reason for the yellow in sector one. Went off and, uh, yeah, DNF'd on the spot, unfortunately. Let's see what's going on in the... Uh... So we've, we've got... We've got... So, well, well Burge, yeah, and... Uh... And the trams are fighting once again. I'm just trying to keep up with everything that's going on. So I've got the the race on one screen, and I've got Discord up on another screen where we're basically getting told things that are going on so we know other bits and pieces. So we've got Ian and and Liam uh, telling us what's going on, just, well, just in case we can't see, because we can only see what uh, our broadcast director, Daniel Costello, has put up on our screens for us. So we can always sort of keep you updated. And it's, I, I need more eyes to be honest, because uh, 
A lot going on as uh, Bergia is now in fourth ahead of Natramzen. Slightly pulling away here. So, uh, so yeah. As the yellow comes out in uh, sector three. And it hasn't, or it has cleared now. I don't know what what's going on out there at the minute. That makes two of us. There is uh, Jake stuck in the middle of all of that, that little melee that was going on. And Marais again starting to close back in on Jackson Robbyard. Maybe hanging out the back end of the, the Jag coming through Indy. Heading towards Arnage. Jasu, Natramzen, Cantonen all in the pit lane now. So we're definitely in that uh, final pit stop window with uh, just under 40 minutes remaining. You can see the way the pit lane's laid out here. You've sort of got the line and then the boxes, no wall. So if there is uh, some sort of accident, then uh, it will be calamitous. Especially with all that oil and petrol and stuff lying around people probably smoking in there as well at the time which again like why so, literally playing with fire at that point Back now to uh, Simicic, still <laughs> slipstreaming in behind uh, Jake for that mega fuel strat, uh, mega fuel saving strat. Yeah, the simplest of 3000 IQ strats right there being employed by Yerni. So, we ride on board with uh, Yane Simicic behind uh, Jake, who is still holding second position behind uh, Nico Hillbrand, who has gone full on biggles for today's festivities, like he has done previously here on the Historic Road Racing Championship. The finale, Le Grand. And uh, Yane currently sitting in sixth position after the. Uh, the drama that we saw a bit earlier on with Real Deal God, uh, not only hitting the grassy verge, as that's definitely a Valtteri Bottas uh, strap there from Yerne going into Indianapolis. As, oh, Jake getting the tail all sideways and happy. Back in these days, no ABS, uh, no traction control. So it's just about just planting it, hoping that it sticks and uh, you get the opportunity to put the power down and build some speed as we're going to see these two guys do now but at the moment with uh, just under 37 minutes to go of the uh, finale Nico Hildbrand leads Jake by 21.6 seconds and yeah, they're still in cl uh, using that 3000 IQ strat of fuel saving to its absolute maximum 
Mark Seidler leading by 31 and a half seconds. And it's a Mercedes 1 2, courtesy of Richard Woodcock, Woodcock uh, at the moment. And now, after having done his uh, second pit stop, Oscar de Cantonen is about 18 seconds behind uh, Salami. And the good thing is, is that we've got the uh, Bristol 450 of Darren Andrews, who was fourth in pre qualifying in the 355. Uh, Bristol now currently P3, but expect the orders to uh, to change as we've got Frank Verplanken and uh, Reese Gardner rounding out the top five in the two litre class. In the, in the but yeah, no, just uh, you'll be able to hear when he puts down the throttle. He's going to do that now, so they go underneath the bridge. And, uh, yeah, I mean, this has just been an, an, an interesting race as Morea now pits from fourth place. We see the Molzan hop there, Aiden. <laughs> and that's never going to get old. That should be an HRRC no. meme. meme. Here's the Molzan um, hop here at it, Legrand. It's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's one way of getting some really cool screenshots. It looks like the car is jumping when really it's not. Yeah. Might hear the engine note change in a second as uh, Yanni lifts off the throttle. Or not. And Oscardi's going to take the lead back again in the two litre class because Salami has pitted. <coughs> more ASMR there. Just riding a world with Yoni. That that Ferrari sounds mighty though, Aiden, doesn't it? Well they all do to be honest. It's uh, yeah. it's a different kind of noise compared to I was probably because they, they rev quite a lot lower than those uh what do you think of those old Formula One engines at the end of their their service history. They were two point four litre V eights that rev to eighteen thousand oh, RPM yeah. whereas these are Five liter V8s that rev to probably what eight or nine, so they're just they're just grunty, which I think sounds better than a screamer. Still remember when what was it? They were, they were getting rid of the two point four liter V8s, and then every every one of the teams in the Formula One paddock were like just literally take de restricting them and just revving them so they were glowing red hot, weren't they? <laughs> Making them play God Save the Queen and stuff like uh... <laughs> yeah. Like Renault used to. Yep. Mm. Well, the scar is right on the back bumper of uh, the trams in there. Yes, and you can hear the as they roar past. Well, you hear the 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 wasp buzzing in the can edition from Oscardi, and then the rumble of uh, Nitramson going past in the three liter. Probably a, a point at when they accelerate that they they harmonise exactly. <laughs> trying to hear it now. No, it's not there. Huge blip there going into Indianapolis from uh, Cantonen. And what's more interesting, Nico Hillbrand and Jake have just pitted. Indeed. And Nico's been in the pits for nearly half a minute. It's wonderful hearing all these backfiring noises as they're going down the gears into the braking zone and then I like, hear this crack of unburned fuel. Wonderful sound.
And the bronze name out of the pits. Yeah, mate, in. Should be a short fill for him, given that he's been uh, saving fuel for the last uh, half an hour or so. There he is, oh. leaving the pit lane. Oh, and there's been a problem for Jackson Robbiard. Uh, Ian Monroe's just told us that he's just overshot his pit box. Whoops. Well, that's better than not being serviced at all, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. you, 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 you would take the, the second or two lost and have to drive around at 30 miles an hour to make sure you've got enough fuel to get back around again. <laughs> That never gets old when those cars go onto the bulls out. <laughs> so is that, is that the meme of uh, of Legrand? Yeah. Where it's, it was yellow in sector one at Dundrot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that was, uh, what was it, when we saw Jackson Robbiard actually on his roof with three wheels on the wagon, if I remember correctly, in the first 15 or 20 minutes. Oh, it's like, new spine, please. <laughs> Yes, I've got a C2 and a C3 fracture. I need a new spine, please. Just like that, with 30 minutes to go. The interesting thing from my perspective, though, Aiden, is that Jake is only 11 seconds behind uh, Nico for the race lead. Yeah, the gap's come down quite a way, but he's also pulling away from Simicic. Now I'm wondering, yeah, because that gap was 11 seconds, it's now gone to 8.5, so has Nico had a bit of a moment, that's what I'm thinking. Is your race leader just trying to remember where Nico was actually coming into this final round because he, he wasn't able to do some of the races as well along with um, with Yerne if I remember correctly Aiden like having other commitments elsewhere in other racing series but I, I still have to give props to Nico for going full on uh, you know what I'm going to call him Nico Biggles Hillebrand from now on after seeing seeing him rock up in the full gear on Twitch. Yeah, Off just as guy, a just as a reminder to anyone oh! who's saying that. Uh, saying that he's uh, if, if, if nobody saw it um, he, he's wearing, he, he's full on cosplaying this. He's wearing, the, there we go goggles, helmet <laughs> chin strap wheels a bit uh, a bit non-realistic but uh, yeah. if he's under field he'd be like yeah, maybe also the Hugo that, Boss but, uh, um... <laughs> Polo shirt. Is... Well, maybe they would have. But, uh... they, they but yeah, that, that, that's. Uh... Very careful now, I think. This is what we were talking about earlier with these uh, more pro esport guys treating it as it is, just a bit of fun, and uh, it's always it's always great to see. It should have been a requirement that everybody has to <laughs> has to cosplay in some yeah. form or another. I'll have to get them to do that as part of the regulations uh, when a next another season comes up it's like if you are streaming you have to be in the proper get up period get up it's a requirement <laughs> formula one esports they have to wear the full flame proof suit oh god three layers of nomex yeah and the helmet and the hands device oh, those dear. things are weird though oh yeah <laughs> like so you slam on the brakes and your head doesn't go anywhere it's just it's weird I remember uh, what's it? I had a taxi ride in a uh, in the 2011 BMW M3 GT2 with Dirk Werner back in Lausitz, and I had the full get up. It was hands device, race helmet, um, full BMW motorsport Puma Puma race suit, and it was like 36 degrees Celsius, so the car felt like I was in a Finnish sauna. So I was wondering when Kimi Raikkonen and uh, Heikki Kovalainen were, Kovalainen were going to appear alongside us. <laughs> Matt Wright 
leaving the pit lane here. So there's one thing that hasn't changed at this track, it's the pit lane exit. Which is quite unfortunate that it spits you back out onto the racing line. <laughs> it's like people are just having to go wide just to avoid you. Could be worse, it could be Donington and Croft, where oh. you're crossing the actual exit to set up for turn one. Yeah. Boing. <laughs> Welcome everyone to today's Le Grand Finale. It's the HRRC hop, skip and a jump at the Mulzan. Jonathan Edwards will be turning up in a minute to do the, the old triple jump. <laughs> gap between Nico and Jake seems to sort of like ebb and flow as we've had a oh, yellow ounce in sector two. Let me guess, it's at Indianapolis. Hmm, possibly. I'm sure we'll be informed in due course. <laughs> Deacon was saying, do a mock Mario jump sound the next time. <laughs> And uh, it was, funnily enough, it was uh, Dion Hansen that just had an off at Indy. A slight off. Thank you, Ian, for keeping us updated. Oh, is someone just... Has someone else gone off there? I just <laughs> heard that. I heard that. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say. I was, like, thinking, I... Oh, Diego Schneider Hi there. again. Doing a drag race up the, uh, <laughs> the Mall Sand. Yeah, he definitely le left some 11s is behind when he uh, buried the throttle. I don't even know what the Mario jump sound is. Is that doing? Well, I, I don't know. That was more the catchphrase buzzer noise. Well, there's a noise that could be accompanied with Diego at the moment. It's the Family Fortunes buzzwigs, where it goes, <laughs> you know, on that one. <laughs> replay here of Sideways. Presumably getting Sideways. Oh, there's uh, three wheels on the wagon as well. No, yeah. Let's turn it to a light robin <laughs> and just... <laughs> He's, done, uh, he's like the stick in he's, top gear. Yeah. <laughs> Was it like with the putting the the, the metal uh, tea trays underneath the the rear wheels of your Vauxhall Nova in the eighties and just in the car park? <laughs> yeah. At least you didn't have to wear, worry about tyre wear with that happening on the freeer, I mean. See that there's the uh, Yane Simicic 3000 IQ strap being pulled by Oscar Kantonen, who's been right behind the Tlamson, who's gone off again. Uh, oh, well, I, I think this could work to Oscar Kantonen's uh, advantage, even though he's got quite a big one over Salami. Nearly 44 seconds. That's ridiculous. Scooby in the pit lane for his final stop. Just 22 and a half minutes remaining in this race. Flown by. Mm -hmm. Be quite interested to see what the lap times from. Oscari are in compa comparison with, like, say, Mark Seidler. Wee! <laughs> Point. And then, uh, <laughs> has that position taken back? <laughs> oh, here we go. More side by side. Tramson alongside Oscari Cantonen.
I wonder how much additional speed Oscar is actually getting from bump drafting the trams and down the Molzan. Depends on what his gear is like. Yeah. So I've just been told that Ascari's average lap time is 4 minutes 7. Uh, Zeidler's is pretty much the same. <laughs> Scarry's not needed luck this season, he's just had plenty of Cecil. He's also been the FFF. <laughs> One of those Fs is for very. Yep. Just sounds better <laughs> with FFF. Keeping an eye on the gap between uh, Rajasu and Nitramsen at the moment, um, that gap is starting to come down a little bit, isn't it? For yeah, it is. Three league pass. Uh, oh, no, Richard. That's, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds heard before disaster. <laughs> it, it was like, uh, oh, and then an expletive of your choice. I, I don't think. I don't think he even got to the expletive. I think he just got to the O, oh, and then. Maybe the beginning <laughs> of the F or the sh, but that was it. <laughs> oh, dearie me, that was a hard old hit. It looked like the left rear was the, uh, well, it wasn't just the wheel, it was the upright that went out as well. So probably had, in, in real life, you would have probably had no seatbelts. He would have been ejected from that. Just, <laughs> who, who needs the button like James Bond in the, D, in the old DB5 back in the day? It's like, yeah. You haven't got an ejector seat. We've got one already prepared because you're not wearing a seatbelt. <laughs> Looks like after Real Deal God's massive drama earlier on whilst leading, uh, it's meant that yeah, he's clawed back up to sixth. But I think Jake now realises well with about 18 and a half minutes to go. The gap between him and Nico is about 11.8, 11.9 seconds, so he just goes, he'll just have to go, right, I'm in a happy place. I'd lo I would have loved to win it to cap off the championship in the right way, but second's still going to be a pretty damn good result at the end of it all. Just trying to think, have we had a repeat winner in this series? I don't know if we have. I think, um, did you any win it? I think you only won at Spa and at Targa. I think that's the only repeat winner we've had. I need that double checking. Well, Jake actually in the five litre championship um, won both at Longford and at Dundrod. You only won at, at Targa and at Spa. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was talking about overall rather oh, overall. than by, by class, yeah. It's been quite an open championship then, hasn't it? It's not it has, it's yeah. not been dominated by anybody. And I guess with the two um the two time trials and Dundrod that allowed the the two or three litre classes to be able to sort of keep up, so it hasn't been dominated by just the five litres either. It's just that in these days a lot of the tracks were like this, just Yeah. Right foot to the floor and occasionally slow it down. I'm just wondering where Oscari is in terms of the overall classification because he's he's been doing a really really good job again, even though not, yeah. So 
12th position, which would put him outside of the points overall. But yeah, we we, we all knew that the five litres were going to be busted in terms of the, the, the power differential between the three classes anyway. That gap for second and three liter, Aiden, has got down to just over a second now. It was uh, closer to 1.5. You've got a yellow out in sector number two. Yeah, and the trams and it's hovering around that one to 1.1 second mark. It's now just gone up to 1.2, back down to 1.1 as they slow up for uh, Indy here. Try and maximise the entry for the second part and then get it up to Arnage, which is the slice corner on the track. And then have that final blast towards the end of the of the lap. But Seidler leading that class overall. That's not leading that class overall, that doesn't make any sense. He's leading that class and then it's basically just the Gordini Cup in behind him. Yeah, Mark took the win at the Isle of Man, didn't he? Um, earlier on this season. And Beninka's not going to score because he's he, he DNF'd. Uh, so it's it could be the fact that with the way things as they are now with 15 minutes to go, Rujasu could wrap up the title because he was leading ahead of Beninka by five points coming into this final round. And he, I mean, neither neither Rujasu, Beninka, or well, Zaida did actually race at the Targa Florio, but took only a point, whereas Dion Hansen, um, who competed in that race, I think was the only appearance the Dutch driver made, won at Targa Florio in the in the three litre. So, yeah, Rujasu is very much on course to wrapping up the three litre class title. This is all once the uh, drop scores have been processed and things like that, uh, just to allow for people to maybe not turn up to a particular round or if they've got other racing commitments elsewhere but again this was a rule that was in place in those days anyway so proper full on uh, rule system and rule set I think they, all of the results will be posted to, to Jake's Discord and to his YouTube community tab and stuff like that bit of a slide from uh, Tramson coming out of the Dunlop chicane towards Tetra Rouge here great corner doesn't matter what the era it's probably one of my favourite corners in uh, in sim racing as they go over that little jump once again with uh, 13 and a half minutes remaining so probably another four laps or so maybe oh and another yellow out in sector one I think the Tramson is just floating at the very edge of what he can pick up in the slipstream. Clawing it in by about a millimetre or so for every second he's in, and then it should just start pulling. And I think it is just starting to pull now. Yeah. You can see that car in front is getting slightly bigger, isn't it? So he's just entered the the toe. Should see that Tramson, yep, half a second now. Three tenths. Might have a run into, <laughs> into the next corner. There we go. He's going for it. Yep. Had to lift though because of the king oh. and the line that it's required. We should have the braking into uh, into Mulsan Corner here if he uh, decides he wants to go full send. No, he's thought better of it. Might have him on the next straight, maybe, or on the the, the run to uh, towards uh, the, the start finish line again. Yeah, and then they'll have to negotiate their way through Maison Blanche, won't they? That uh, literally nigh on flat out chicane. I mean, now being what, four tenths behind. He's still in that window. Speed starting to happen a little bit here, but they're going to the braking zone. Long enough. No, I think he's might be better off trying to see whether you know he gets he keeps with him 
going back onto the Mulzan again, that'll probably be his best opportunity to get the overspeed on uh, Jasu for, for second place in the class. Might actually be the closest battle we've got on the track, isn't it? Uh... Yeah. So it was quite close for the first few laps, and now everybody's nicely spread out as mistakes creep in and the, the pit stop cycles come round and drivers sort of forget where they need to brake with the, with the brakes getting hot and the uh, fuel burning off and the car handles totally differently. I know Jake's been saying quite a lot that the Jag handles a lot nicer when it's on low fuel versus a full tank. The trams and slipstreaming his way up the, the final straight here. That's a great camera shot. That's wonderful. Put a filter on that, it would look almost real. It's yeah, I think he's just saving good. himself for the more sand here, isn't he? Yeah, he's not got to chance it through Dunlop. Can't chance it through Tetra Rouge, but if he gets a good run coming out of Tetra Rouge, then he'll line it up. He'll tee it up nicely. And he's sticking with Rujasu as we head into the final 10 minutes. Battle for P2 in the 3 litre class. Uh, very, very hotly contested. And a little bit closer to the wall by Nitramzen. Might have given him a bit more momentum coming through Tetra Rouge now. I'll head on to the Molzan very shortly. But yeah, I think Rujasu knows that there's going to be enough as <laughs> Oscar de Cantonen finished sideways right there coming through sets the exit of Tetra Rouge if he can Scandi flick anywhere he will oh yeah like we saw at Dundrod so that was great especially with the hairpin that we had as well which caught out quite a few people here we go then yeah. there's going to be no stopping this no not at all here comes the Germans. There we go, and the Tramson takes second place in class for now, because you'd think the next time they come round. Yeah. Well, maybe even by the end of this straight, uh, Rajasu will be back in front again, because he'll be having the strip sh uh, slipstream there. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Uh, and that overspeed's happening now. I would imagine that is going to pull out, and it shows his nose to Nitramsen. The wasp in the tin can sound again. And then the rumbles of the three litres. <laughs> I'm saying that. He's not going for it, Nitramsen. No, sorry, not Nitramsen. No. Uh, Rujasu. Uh, I think he's just... Uh, could have a battle all the way up to the final lap on this one. Just hearing that the leaders cross the line now, and that being Nico Hillebrand. Estimating two more laps here. Three fifty-three with eight minutes to go. Oh, crikey, three minutes fifty-three. That's about one point two. That's about one point three seconds off of Yanni Simicic's uh, best time in pre-qualifying, which is uh, three minute fifty-one point seven. And that fuel is. Uh, It's definitely uh, helping that Jaguar be a bit more stable. There is uh, Nico Hillbrand. Pretty flawless for for Mark Ziedler though. Um, this will be it's on course to getting his second win of the the championship, having done so back at the Isle of Man uh, at round three. Jasu has got past uh, Nitramsen for second position in three litre and that gap has now started to expand to at 1.1 seconds so Nijasu might have gotten the run on Nitramsen out of that, well that would have been out of shot there Aiden and uh, 
trams and again just cutting when she came through Maison Blanche like nobody's business. I mean, everyone seems to be doing a bit of dust kicking up right there, don't they? Uh, they'll have spent a lot of time trying to work out where they can and can't put the car. See where the uh, track limits are. So we see uh, someone's just diving into the pit lane there. I can't really see it on my oh my screen because it's a bit compressed, but I thought it was in the trams, but it's not. It was more a letter? Okay. So short fueled. So a bit of a splash and dash there. Then for Moraletto, who's had three spins here today. And it's Ramson's now 1.6 seconds behind Turijasu, so a bit of a difficulty here now for Nitramson here, Aiden, because that gap was at some points when they were going down the malls and together, it was like less than a tenth. And they were pulling alongside each other more times than sort of waiting in it, waiting in for a queue in Sainsbury's or something like that. Uh, just how close it's been for that second position, for that second position in that class will now dis potentially decide the three litre drivers championship. Yeah, will do. Nice little uh, comment from Mason789 in, in the YouTube chat on your stream, Aiden, saying, the jump reminds me of Dingledale from Brands Hatch GP just before being reprofiled. There's now Nico Hildbrand is making his way through. We've got just four minutes on the clock to go. Yeah, he can actually afford to slow right down and uh, cross the line just as the time expires, but as it stands, he might have to do one more lap after this. Yeah. Oh, and uh, I think we've just had our, our DNF right towards the end of the race. I think that was... Uh, Liam, Liam Do Dolan in the number 200 has just had a bit of a disastrous end to his campaign in the HRRC. Can we get a replay of that and play it on a loop? I don't think Nico's slowing down, is he? <laughs> oh dear, the bots have emerged again. <laughs> Matt's it, it's all your fault. <laughs> Here we go. So this is Liam Dolan. It's coming into Indy. Another Indy. Oh! oh <laughs> that was a yeet. And the, the Romanian <laughs> judge gives him a 9.9. 9. <laughs> that was like something style. out of Tony Hawk. <laughs> Or, or Travis Pastrana. There was, I think, there was a double backflip involved in that one, wasn't there? Oh, was it? Was it Colin McRae that rolled it and carried on? X Games, yeah, yeah. X Games in the gold Subaru. He did, a, he did a couple of barrel rolls. I think two or three, if I remember correctly. Managed to keep the car running. Did somebody say just yeet? Uh, that was me that said yeet. Yes. <laughs> just yeet dot com. Over 90 seconds remaining. Oh, there was another yellow set, yellow out there. Oh, 
Oscari Cantonen doing the uh, the Max Tad headlight show <laughs> that you might remember from TCUK, Alex. Oh yes, from your good self, of course. Yeah. Headlights on on the BMW 125 IM Sport, and that still, I think, even in this season of TCUK, when someone else started to do it, I said, "Ah, look, the old Ada Millwall trick is back." <laughs> well, Max Tad was doing it first, and then he left, and I was like, oh, I'm, t "I'm doing this now." It's like <laughs> flash. <laughs> Right, there we go. I'm wondering where Nico is at the moment on the circuit, because we're 40 seconds away. There he is. Looks like we're doing another lap. Yeah, he's, he's not just coming up to the uh, the final few corners now. He's not going to be able to slow down and give it 30 seconds, so we've got one more lap. Jake. <laughs> <laughs> Jake's under fueling. I mean, we've got to manufacture some drama, haven't we? Yeah, of course. Wouldn't be a wouldn't be a race without it. Drive to survive, nineteen fifty four. Or driving to stay alive, nineteen fifty four. I think. Yeah, it really was driving to survive at this point, wasn't it? Oh, he's gone. Oh, look, Bergier's in the in the hunt now for P3. Now, that's been an interesting development. The Tramson was, what was it, right with Rajasu. Now, that gap has expanded to five and a half seconds. So, Tramson, if he's short-fueled, is the time to hit zero now for the final round of the HRRC season. I think Bergier might have the run on him. He does. He does have the run on him. This could be close between these two. Still got one more lap to do after this. Remember? Yeah. Always put in that extra lap if you're in a timed race, because you never know. Mm -hmm. I did a a race in a in another YouTuber community event in some F4s, and it was at Sonoma, and I crossed the line as the clock hit zero, and I had to do the extra lap. Oh no! I was like, I could have slowed down, but I didn't. I think on this last lap, the Tramson's going to have to... Well, he's going to be very, very worried about the Mulsanne. He's got to drive fast enough to keep up, but slow enough to save. Mm -hmm. Well, that's brave. To the outside, Bugier gets through on my Tramson for third position going on, as we have got someone going into pit lane. And now Oscari Cantonen is the two litre meat and a three litre sandwich. Scooby's That's... had to pit right at the right at the death. Oh, now I'm wondering how far is Jano Simicic away from Scooby? Probably not going to be enough anyway because Scooby was only in the pits for 6.1 seconds, so. For... Just for a little splash of fuel. So he's over a minute and a half behind Scooby, so fifth isn't going to be uh, a possibility for for Yerne on this particular occasion, Aiden. Yeah, just got just got done over by the uh, the pit stop bug. That's, whoa! Ooh. Took a little bit too much uh, grass there. And he's sideways again, going into the the exit of Indy. Yeah, no, putting on a show. All right, so Nico Hillebrand coming through the final few kinks here, and he will be the final winner of the final race of the HRRC season. Some will call it redemption for what's happened in uh, other rounds, but he's going to be a, a very happy man crossing the line in the Jag. GP Laps Jake will be second. 
in approximately 20 seconds or so and uh, will take the championship win helped in a way by the, the glitch that Jernie Simicic suffered in his pit stop but it's kind of the, the equivalent of something going wrong in real life isn't it so kind of denied the championship battle that we wanted coming in but Jake a very worthy winner in his own league so that probably means it was rigged but Maria will take a very anonymous but very you know very good third he's about a minute behind uh, Hillebrand at this point so we're just going to have to wait a little bit for him to cross the line. And then, all being well, he'll be followed by Jackson Robillard and Scooby. Simoncic will finish in sixth and uh, just lose out on the on the championship at this point. So we just need to, to wait for everybody to, to cross the line. There should be uh, a, bit of, um, a bit of traffic in between some of these drivers as well. So everybody will be finishing all at the oh. same time, hopefully. Well, this we still have a, here, have yeah. a battle that's uh, raging on towards the end of the, the race here. I think this is just coming up to Indy. Yeah, yeah it looks that way. So we've still got something else going on. Yeah, that gap is about two and a half tenths. There's uh, Maria crossing the line in third place. Jackson Robillard coming across the line. But, oh, Nitramson's kept that car very, very wide. No surprise that it's sideways again from Oscar Di Cantonen, who's going to not only take the, the race win, this will be, funny enough, his fourth of the season in the two-litre class, and effectively he wrapped up the title pretty much last time out at, at Targa Florio. Um, but again, yeah, no, Tramson's still battling away over that final step on the virtual rostrum for the three litres. I mean, Tramson's done a handsome job of keeping that car in front, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. Uh, just a tenth in it. But you never know, he could run out of juice just oh, before yeah. the line and uh, and get overtaken. So we'll just have to hope that it all goes to plan. Scooby's on the, on the final run towards the uh, the finish line. Is but yeah, I don't think he's got enough in it. He could just try and go for the photo finish right at the death. Has he got the the pace? Has he got the slipstream? Oh, I think he's yeah. got, he's got. He might get this, you know. He, he might have has, this. He might. Yeah, he has. Oh, oh ho, 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 right, right on, on the, the line. line. And it was it was just over a tenth between them and they crossed the line as well. <laughs> oh. Well. That was definitely what you call a photo <laughs> finish there, Aiden. Yeah, there's Scooby. We'll take a, a lonesome fifth in class. Simicic, a bit further behind that. We'll see. Uh, see what else uh, happens in the dying stages. Simicic. Simicic is on the mole sand here. So I think he's. Has he finished? Yeah, he's going slow, so he has finished. Mm -hmm. He's doing a bit of formation flying with, uh, with Hillebrand. Or Biggles, as we're now going to call him. <laughs> They're going to try and do some donuts in her. <laughs> or, some, or some drifting. Yeah. There we go. Little, East little... Morphers just showing off now. Oh, and Nico's just binned it. <laughs> on, 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 on camera. All right. Cool. So, what an ending we had with a fun with a. With the photo finish, it's uh, been a great season to to commentate on, having been here for, for every every single uh, race this season. But there is your top three: Nico Hillebrand, Jacob Demare, GP Laps, Richie Axelson, and uh, oh, excuse me, and Maria in the uh, third position. And uh, I think we've uh, somebody let's get on here. We have uh, Nico Hillebrand in for a, a quick interview here, Nico. You you won the race. You didn't put it in a tree. How are you feeling? Ah, a bit weird. I have to adjust from you know old habits, but oh, what a race! Awesome, absolutely awesome. The series. So you, you you managed to to get into the lead and stay there. Did you ever have a a feeling of don't mess this up, don't don't stick it in a wall? Uh, did you have any any Larry moments? I know you, you you sort of went a bit wide at one corner and you and you kind of. Uh, had a bit of a, an OMG moment, but you, you seem to keep it there and uh, 
can we can just we're actually watching your Twitch stream right now. We can see you uh driving around on your in lap to we managed to see you in your in your hat and your goggles doing full uh full cosplay on this. So uh you you you've, you've managed to win a race in the HRRC in something that you're probably not used to driving. So I mean like how is this to compared to some of the usual stuff that you've been driving in, in eSport? Way more fun. Um it's really crazy because for everything else, you know, the steering wheel actually steers the car. I know, a very controversial topic and statement. How am I so brave? But uh, here it's basically like a slot car, so to say. Like, you have the direction thing in the middle, which is the front wheels in this case. And, um, yeah, you basically just sort of give the first direction of the corner and then you just steer with the, with the throttle and sometimes a little bit with the brake. But it's just uh, such a different driving experience. It's so much fun. And, you know, racing in this league, it's been incredible because not only is it competition at like a very high level with, you know, people like Yane, with Jake, who has like such an expertise in cars like these, but everyone is also helping each other out. You know, everyone's always there to give each other some feedback and stuff. And it's just so awesome here. Yeah, it's, it's good to see that the uh, like people like yourself and Yane haven't been try-harding this with you your hack setups and and things like that but would, would you be back for another season if it if it ever came around i mean i'm one of the main people who's pushing them to do a main uh, another season maybe with the 67 mod next time so we have ford versus oh, yes. ferrari versus chaparral and uh, mirage and all that um it's absolutely a fantastic series i absolutely love everything about it i'd also be down for like a full historic 24 hours if we could get that together because i think oh, the God. driver demand is definitely there yeah and uh, yeah, just really awesome experience. <laughs> it's, it's, it's been something different, hasn't it? Absolutely. And like racing at these old tracks as well, like of course you have uh, Assetto Corsa, but like the physics and the force feedback and the feel and everything in R Factor 2 is just completely in its own league. All right, fantastic stuff. Well, uh, we'll let you go and uh, cool off and have some dinner and maybe a couple of beers and stuff and have yourself a, a good Christmas as well. And we'll hopefully see you soon. Thank you very much. You guys as well. So see you later. No worries. Okay. Uh, we also have the champion in the waiting room for the uh, for the, uh, uh, the 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 interview portion of the show. Jake, you won your own championship. <laughs> I won my own championship, but it uh, man, what is it? It was a crazy race, and I don't even I don't really know what happened to folks in the pit lane and stuff. And it's not exactly the way maybe I'd wanna wanna win it, but it um solid drive there and i'm so happy nico won the race as well just at the season he's had and everything so it was quite quite the race itself from the driver's yeah. seat yeah because you, you appear to be nowhere in the opening few minutes or so and it was like oh you know yeah he's got this because jake's nowhere and then it was just this bizarre we think it was a bizarre glitch in the pit stop maybe yeah didn't cross the white line properly or he crossed a portion of the pit lane that where it's not coded or anything like that so was it just one of those things that happens and and and, uh, and and that kind of thing and do you think you, you might have lucked out in that case yeah i think i lucked out i mean i know when i was testing here the pit, pits are finicky and you know when they don't have the separating wall and things like that because it's all about lines on the road and uh i know there are a few ways that you could invalidate your stop but I, I have no idea if you're an a and i know it sounded like dion had the same issue um i don't know if they crossed those lines or didn't enter correct or if it was just you know one of those things i guess you could chalk it up to mechanical failure or something but it um yeah, we, yeah not the way that, that yeah. i want it to be decided yeah not the way i want it to be decided but ultimately you know it takes luck and uh there's been times this season two where i didn't have luck on my side so yeah uh happy my stops went well at least and we had a scary moment in the pits with uh our stuff behind me and stuff but otherwise it was pretty clean overall yeah it did look pretty clean i think we only had probably two pieces of car on car contact one was just racing instead one was a bit overzealous into a corner but i think that's just been the the case of the driving stands across the whole season there's been none of that trying to lob it into a corner from 150 yards further back than you should have done to win the race on the on the first lap and this is, overall it's been great to watch uh, people in the youtube chat have been saying that it's been great racing to watch and and all that kind of thing so i mean are you happy with the way that, that everything's gone over the last what sort of six months or so yeah, I couldn't, it honestly couldn't have gone better. First time hosting a series in R Factor 2 and with these cars and tracks, and we had little bumps along the way, 
uh, with things. But overall, you know, Just Race with our servers did really well. You all with the broadcasts with uh, Simply Race did well as well. And then the drivers themselves, I think everybody, you know, came into this with a similar idea that it's, um, you know, there was there was a bit of this competitive spirit throughout, but it's it's generally just getting together to drive these cars on awesome tracks and everyone was sold on that from the beginning. So I think the uh, the racing is just a result of that. And the big question, will there be a season two in 2023? Nothing to announce at this point, but we'll definitely be doing races. Um, and, and I wouldn't doubt seeing something in the future uh, that's a bit more of a series type atmosphere, but nothing, nothing planned just yet. I hope everybody enjoys, you know, a bit of an off season and just reflecting on how much fun this was and, and we'll get to planning something new. Yeah, it was, it was fun to watch. Great to commentate over and uh, you, you found yourself a little niche in here. It's been very popular, very, uh, a lot of people have been talking about it. And I hope we do get to see more like this, maybe even a, a full on 24 hour race uh, for, for this particular track and uh, sort of car combo in the future. That would be great to watch because we we love seeing that the fact that it's just been so different to what we're sort of saturated with at the minute so what we'll do is we'll let you go off and uh, interact with you, your stream chat and uh, have yourself a, a great Christmas as well for next weekend and hopefully see you again soon Thank you Aiden, thank you all for covering the season and everything and uh, it's been a lot of fun Now thank you for putting it on so that was your champion, Jake uh, Richie Axelson is the, the champion and uh, just to do the, the the thank yous for for this season so thank you to obviously jake for putting the series on uh just race for the servers that have been taking an absolute pounding particularly with uh with targa florio and also to uh simply race for the broadcast daniel costello who's been doing all of the cool graphics and all the cool camera shots and replays that you've been seeing through the season and also to alex goldschmidt to zach sweeney and to paul jeffrey that have joined me in the commentary booth over the last six months so Hopefully there will be another season like this in 2023, maybe using some more modern cars. And by modern cars, I mean 1967, 1970 cars, that kind of thing. And hopefully we'll see you for that, if indeed it has happened. But until then, you have yourselves a great Christmas for next weekend. Maybe flick over and put the rest of the football on for this afternoon. But uh, until next time, I've been Aidan Millward. He's been Alex Goldschmidt, and we'll see you again very soon. Goodbye. Oh.